So, as I was saying before, today, before starting the recording, today we are speaking about control experiment. We're starting to speak about control experiment. And since control experiment is quite uh, complex from some point of view um, topic with a, a, a lot of different things to be really understood before to be applied, uh, we will just see a overview and one of these topics that are related strongly needed in control experiment, and then we will focus on the other topics and the other elements of control experiment uh, in January, when hopefully, hopefully we will be more relaxed and after the holidays and with a clear mind than, than today in general. Um, so, Just as our cap of the previous lecture, we were speaking about usability testing as a way to say, okay, let's find someone to use our application so that we will get some feedback on how to improve it. And, and this is what we call usability testing, user testing up to this moment, uh, last week. And we said that this is mostly anecdotally and is observation driven for most part. Today we are focusing on the second part of this of this slide that is control experiment that differently from usability testing is scientific, it's hypothesis driven, and we want to have a more specific question, a more specific thing to understand. We don't want to have some feedback about our application, our prototype, our system, but instead we want to verify, for instance, if users of our apps perform a given task or a given set of tasks faster, with fewer error, with some attributes better, let's say, in a sense, than our competitors. And we see here already two differences. One is that we have a comparison, our application, our system, our prototype, a version of our application, a version of our system, and another version, either of our application or of another application or another system. And then we have some measure that are from this sentence more specific than we will get some feedback. We don't want to see if our app is better, generally better, from um, with respect to another application. We want to know if our app perform faster, for instance, or with fewer error. So something more specific than some feedback or better than something else. And we will see which are the ingredients, so let's say to build and to create a control experiment, to run control experiment, and then to analyze the results of control experiment. As an overview, control experiment are uh, controlled, which you have as evaluator have control of specific aspects of an interactive behavior. They are typically uh, done in a lab, in a laboratory setting, not in the wild, even if some control ex experiment can happen in the wild. Um, as other characteristics, uh, they have that the evaluator or the creator of the, uh, of the control experiment uh, started by choosing an hypothesis to be tested. So not, we would like, again, we would like to get some feedback, but I have this hypothesis and I would like to see if this hypothesis hold or not. And to measure something to decide in a, again, scientific way, in a statistical way, often time, if this hypothesis is true or not. And then we can decide what to do after. But we are not going to get a series of feedback about usability or uh, other elements of the entire application. We have to say, okay, the version, this application and this other application, which is better according to a specific definition of better that we are going to say, and my hypothesis is that my application is better. 
Now I'm saying application, but obviously uh, it could be uh, a version of an application. So my application in version A and my application in version B, or it could be a system, it could be something different, but a comparison to things. Uh, so controlled evaluation of specific aspects in which the evaluator chooses an hypothesis to be tested most appropriately actually is not an hypothesis to be found true, but is a null hypothesis to reject because most of the statistical methods that control experiment uses all, I would say, uses this idea of null hypothesis. You have a null hypothesis that is, let's say, the, the contrary of your hypothesis and you want to compute that hypothesis. And you are considering, you can considering various experimental condition for creating a control experiment. And it has three main steps as for the usability testing. There is the planning of the study that is, again, fundamental, like the usability testing. There is the running and there is the analyze, uh, there is the, the phase of analyzing the results. So run as this asterisk here, because the running is essentially identical uh, once you have planned very well and know what to analyze is essentially identical to usability testing. So in the reminder of this, this lecture and also on this set of slides, when we restart from them in January, we will basically speak about planning and analyzing. Since running works, works again is in the same way as the usability testing. You get some participant in your target population in a place and you give them some task and they use the application and you measure something and then uh, you say hello to one participant and get another participant and restart again. So very, very close to uh, usability testing. The difference may, there may be some difference that stem from the planning phase, obviously. So if you plan something different, then obviously that impact the running phase. But the two main steps that change with respect to ability testing are planning and analyzing results. Again, since this is more scientific and is hypothesis driven, uh, the analyze part especially is mathematical, is statistical. You're applying statistics to analyze the results much more than you can do or you will do in um, usability testing. So which are the six main steps for planning a controlled experiment? So the first one is to choose what you want to experiment, what you want to study. And this choice should be narrow and testable with a narrow and testable question that you want to answer. Is my application faster in doing this than another application. It's narrable, it's testable. You, some, uh, you can have some measure to say, to answer to this question. We say, yes, it's faster, it's faster from, uh, of 10% faster, is 20% faster, is not faster at all. Um, so you have some difference. You have some thing that you can test and measure in some way, uh, in numerical way, not qualitative information. So you choose what you want to study, you choose the question and you create the hypothesis. So my hypothesis is that my application is faster than the other in doing a series of tasks. And in defining the hypothesis, and we will see more in depth all of these, uh, you will define some variables and you will define some measures to, to have and to consider to, uh, to, to understand if the hypothesis is true or not and to answer with this question. Again, let me stress that the question and also the hypothesis is testable, so measurable, and especially narrow. It's not, I would like to see uh, which is the difference between application A or application B, or version A, version B. But I would like to see if something there is different, better, whatever, in a testable way than something in the same application in another application. So something really narrow with respect to, again, usability testing that instead said, I would like to see the usability of the entire application. So 
<clears throat> the third plan, so choose what you want to study, choose the hypothesis, then select your participant. And this is same old, same old than in the previous uh, lectures. Your target population in an appropriate number without introducing bias, selecting well, ages, balancing, different perspective behavior that they, or knowledge that they expertise that they should or should not have, etc. Fourth step, decide which experimental method you want to use. We will see that essentially there are two experimental methods for control experiment. And, and then there is a third method that is the mix of the previous two. So decide which of the two or the mix you want to use. And you have to say one of these. It's not like think aloud in usability testing that you can choose not to use or not to use, but is essentially either use experimental method one or experimental method two or the mix of these two methods. Fifth, write a task. So planning, you're choosing your question, your hypothesis, participant, which experimental methods do you want to have? And then you write the task that you are going to, to give the participant to prove or better to disprove your hypothesis. And write the task as we wrote the task for usability testing and in the past and write the task along with experiment procedure. So something similar to what we did with the script and with the, that, that document for usability testing. So what you're going to, to do, what you're going to measure, what happens and so on. So this is again, another thing that is quite similar to usability testing. And then finally, even if this is the planning phase, you have to decide, pay attention which statistical test you're going to use to potentially analyze the results. So this is something that will be used in the analysis of the results, but it's a decision that you have to take now. Because according to the statistical test, you can answer to this question here and valid, uh, refuse or not this hypothesis in a slightly different way. So it should be better to say that given the hypothesis, the statistical test should be good enough for the hypothesis, should, should support the hypothesis, the results that we want to extract from the hypothesis. Because some statistical tests can give you some information and other cannot give you some inform that those information. Either are appropriate in a specific context with specific tasks, with specific experimental methods and hypotheses, and others are not. And we are going to see briefly those things. And I have the first question for you that is easy. Um, do you like statistics or no? Or it's better to avoid statistics in your life? So not my favorite, okay. Uh, yes, it's you like or not, stats are good. So, okay, uh, let's say that we range from yes, it's, it's fine to not my favorite, but if I have to use it, it's, 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 it's fine. So yeah, we, we, are not going to, we, we are not going to have a micro statistical course inside this. We are just going to, to point out the main methods that uh, statistical method that we are going to use for that in HCI is are used for um, control experiment for analyzing the results of control experiment, and we will see with a more depth one of these that is the chi square test that can allow us to answer to satisfy let's say some of these also to reject some to try to reject some to work better to work with some of these hypotheses to give results from that, some of these hypotheses. When we plan, uh, when we speak about control experiment, we speak about three main things. Let's start basically three elements that constitute, mainly constitute um, a, a control experiment. 
Let's start from the last one that is also the easier and the one that you know better, participants. So participants in control experiments are just called for historical reason subjects, but they are participants, they are typically people. Uh, which are the three things to consider uh, when you have participants, when you want to recruit participants in addition to what we already know. So we know that we have to get a representative sample of participants of our target population in a sufficient number. And that participants are obviously vital to the success of any experiment. This apply here, apply in usability studies, apply for observation, interviews, surveys, and what else. What changed here is the sample size. So which is, if any, the number of participants that we can use for a control experiment? How many participants do we need to recruit for a control experiment? So we know that for usability test, uh, Nielsen suggests how many participants? We did this last week, two weeks ago, five. Exactly. So for usability testing, Nissan say five participants are enough. You can go with five. For control experiment, there is no uh, strict number or suggested number like uh, in the case of usability testing. Uh, but the rule of thumb, let's say, is that you should have at least double that number. So at least 10 people for a control experiment. And this is at least, it's so difficult to say control experiment with less defined people than 10 people, but it's also uh, doable or expected or common to find, to, to see control experiment with 30 people, with 50 people. It depends, it depends from the uh, experimental methods you, you are going to use. It depends of the hypothesis you are going to, to, to formulate, uh, it depends on the statistical methods you're going to use. There are some statistical methods that need at least, let's say 20 participants to work well and all their data to work well. So you cannot say 10 and use some statistical method. So it really depends, uh, but let's say that at least the bare minimum is 10. Less than 10 is extremely difficult or to, to find a control experiment to create a control experiment. And this is the, the, the easy, easy, easy part. The other two things that are extremely relevant is hypothesis and variable. So we know that hypothesis start from that question and the hypothesis is the prediction of the outcome of the study. What you would like to demonstrate. So my hypothesis, let's use this as an example. My hypothesis is that the version A of my application for creating a, a shopping list, it's faster than the version B. So the point is that a user can create a shopping list with the version A of my application in a faster way than creating the same shopping list with a version B of the application. And this is strict and this is narrow because it's creating a shopping list of a specific application and it's testable. We can measure speed, the time that the user is, is, is spending to create the same shopping list into version of the application. So the hypothesis is the prediction of the outcome of the study. My hypothesis is that my, the version A of the application is faster in creating the shopping list than in the version B. And this hypothesis is framed in terms of variables. And we, uh, what are variables? Variables are things to either manipulate or measure to test the hypothesis. And we will see them, I think, in the next slide uh, with more care, but essentially we have two mandatory uh, variables to consider uh, that we need to consider and decide for these two kinds of variables and three uh, optional 
let's say, not mandatory at least, uh, variable to use and to consider in planning that we may consider or at least think about it. So while the first two variables that are independent and dependent variable are really mandatory, we cannot uh, forget about them. The other three in some, in some cases they apply, in some other case they don't. And so we can skip them, skip considering them or not. Uh, but for the first two types, the independent variable, the dependent variable, we cannot uh, forget about them. And the hypothesis, it's again the prediction framed in term of variable. And typically it's in the form of a null hypothesis to be disproved. So instead of saying uh, the creation of uh, the shopping list with application A, with the version A of the application is faster than version B, we say the null hypothesis. We say, let's say the con sort of contrary. There is no difference in speed between the creation of a list with application version A and version B. So while the, the hypothesis the, that is called alternative hypothesis, so we will go deep on this in January. While the alternative hypothesis that is this prediction is typically positive and has a specific orientation towards one of the two things that we are comparing, in this case, that the first one is faster than the second one for this specific task, the null hypothesis say that there is no difference in speed in doing that operation between the two application, the two version. And this is the null hypothesis that we need to disprove. We, we would like at least, not we need, but we would like to disprove with our experiment. We would say that yes, it's false that there is no difference and there is a difference. And this difference is hopefully that version A is faster than version B. So this is what we, we work with hypothesis. And to say this, we need variables and participants to test these hypothesis, to do the task, to, to measure the speed of operation in the application, in the two applications. Variables. I, I was saying before that we have two main types of variables, the independent variables and the dependent variables. Uh, and if you have any question, please write them in the chat because these are sometimes not really easy to, to grasp in all, all these things, not just in variables, uh, to grasp in all their aspects. And similarly, if you already know some, some of these things, I can uh, go a little bit faster, but let me know. So two main kind of variables that are mandatory to consider for control experiment independent variables, or so-called factors, and dependent variable. So the independent variables are the elements of the experiment manipulated or controlled to produce different condition for comparison. And there could be three different interface style, two different interface style, the number of menu item, the icon design in a specific application, etc. And each of these, the interface style, the number of menu, the icon design, can have different values. We can have three interface style to compare. We can have five different menus to compare. We can have three flavors of icon design to compare. And this number, three, five, three, are the values of these independent variable that are called levels. So in, in the case of our example, in which we have an application version A and version B that we want to compare for creating a shopping list, how many variable independent variable we have? One application, version A, version B to compare for the speed. So we, yes, we have one variable because we have just one application with two levels. So that was 
the next question, how many level? But yes, we have one variable that is the application uh, with two levels, version A and version B. So one independent variable, two levels, perfect. And in a control experiment, we can have one independent variable like in this very simple example, or we can have more independent variable. We can have two, three, 11. We will see that it's better. It's recommended not to have more than three uh, independent variable, but we can have multiple independent variable, each one with their own levels. And then we have, the other important things to define, and you see why we, we need to define this because in, in the text of the hypothesis that, in the positive, let's say, hypothesis that, not the null hypothesis that uh, we, we drafted before, uh, we said this thing. We said that we have one application in two version A and B, and we want to measure speed. So the one application in two version is independent variable with their level, and we want to measure speed. This speed is the dependent variable. It could be one or more uh, as before. Um, and essentially, as you see as speed is the characteristic that is measured in the experiment. We would like to measure time hmm, or velocity maybe. Uh, and they're called dependent because their value is depend are dependent on the change made in the dependent variable, in the independent variable. So the time taken, the speed, as we call it up to now, but also the number of errors. We would like to see, we, we bet that the version A of an application produces less error in doing a specific task than version B of the same application. So also number of error could be a dependent variable. The dependence variable are just to give you a stronger idea are those that in the usability testing, we called measures. So things that we measure during the usability testing. If you have any question, just write in the chat again. So let's remake this a few example about independent and dependent variable. So in this case, uh, we have, uh, we want to verify if user of our app perform a task, a given task, faster or with fewer error than our competitor app. So the things in yellow, our app, then our competitor app is the independent variable or the dependent variable. Let's forget about levels for now. Yes, so the yellow part is the independent variable and this is obviously the dependent variable for exclusion a slightly different and more complicated example um, that we are going to use in the reminder of the slides too. Uh, we have this hypothesis, this alternate hypothesis, the um, positive, let's say, hypothesis. Uh, we want to test whether selection speed in a menu improves as the number of menu items decrease. So just to, to say we have, uh, let's say, uh, Let me take a pen. So maybe we have, so we have a menu in an application. We have an entire application, but we don't care in reality. We have a menu with here, three items. So voice number one, voice number two, and voice number three. And you can click on this menu. This is, I don't know, file. And then, oh, and then we have um, the same menu, but it's the same file menu, just longer. One, two, three, four, five. And then we can have, let's say another one. And then we can stop here with, drawing with a mouse, uh, that is maybe seven. Hmm. So this is one and this is seven. Hmm. So we want to test whether the selection speed 
So the user selecting one of these element improves as the number of menu items decrease. So what we are saying here is that in another term is that selecting an element here in this first menu is faster than selecting an element in this second menu. And this is faster than selecting an element here. So we want to do a, a control experiment to this. And again, it's testable because we are speaking about speed to time. And uh, it's narrow because we have three menus here. And we would like to just see if the selection speed of, for instance, the last element of this, it's uh, faster here than here than here. So again, as before, Let's play this game again. Which are the independent variables? Or which is the independent variable? Okay, so the dependent variable, do you agree what, what was written in the chat? In the chat say the independent variable menus, level different number of items, dependent variable selection speed. Yes, uh, so it actually is, is correct. Mm -hmm. So the dependent variable is the menu because we have just menu. The level, so here we can write menu. Uh, each independent variable, so each menu in this case, one just one has three level. Let's, it's not written in the text actually, but let's stick with this example as three level because we have three independent variable, uh, three, the picture here, I, I depicted three menu, but it could be also five. It's not, I agree that it's not written in the text, but let's use this as an example. Uh, this is as correctly written in the chat. This is the number of menu item, of, uh, of items in the menus. So alternatives, three, and the dependent variable is the selection speed. Uh, so in other term, uh, the independent variable is the number of menu item. Uh, if we consider menu item with three, five, and seven level, um, we can have three levels. Hmm? This, the three menus depicted before. And the dependent variable in this case, whether selection speed is the speed of the menu item selection in second, hopefully in seconds, not in minutes, because otherwise we will have probably other kind of problem. Um, we have a question in the chat. Uh, the, the dependent variable can be the number of selection error. Not in this case, because in this case, we, we are interested in the selection speed. But yes, we can have a different of hypothesis. Let's say we want to test whether uh, the number of errors in selection in a menu improves at the number of menu item decrease. This is a totally different uh, hypothesis that is a totally different experiment. You have to conduct a second experiment or uh, you can, yeah, typically you have to conduct a second experiment uh, or you can increase a bit hmm, the, this concept. So add here that you are measuring the speed and also the errors. But you have to formulate the hypothesis in a way that is consistent and measurable. Uh, Adding to this, we need to add the experimental condition. So the experimental condition typically are the tasks that are executing during the experiment. Because adding to this, because each level of an independent variable require one experimental condition to test. So in our case, we have three menus with three, five and seven items. So we have three experimental conditions. Uh, at least. So we can have a task that say, select the last item of each of the menu with three elements. And you are measuring the speed of doing the operation. Now select the same task, select the last item in the five item menu and that select and you are measuring time. And, then, and again, the same task, select the last element of these seven item menu and you are going to select the last. And this is a task. You need at least three experimental conditions. Hmm? Uh, 
and maybe you have may have different tasks, but in the end you have three experimental conditions because you have just three menu in three distribution. version. If you have more than one independent variable, each one with its own level, the experimental condition should obviously account for all the combination, the combination of levels. So in this case, we have three levels in one independent variables. We have just three experimental condition because it's, it's three minus, but it's, it's three, three, three values, three, three levels. Uh, if we have multiple independent variable with multiple levels, maybe, or maybe not, uh, we will have to consider this. So let's take another example. Actually, the same example as before, we want to test whether selection speed as before, so the dependent variable is always the same, we are not caring or thinking about it. Uh, in the menu, improve as the number of menu items decrease, same as before, and we are going to use labels that are textual or icon based. So in the menu just appear the name of the item or also the icon. So in this case, which are the, how many independent variable we have and which are, and again, how many level for each. Independent variable of type of row and number of row. Menu item. Ah, I see. So one independent variable is as before the number of menu item and, and, and the other is um, the type, text or icon. And we have a comment in the chat. Oh, okay. For, for the first independent variable, it's this, it's the same. The dependent variable is the number of menu item and let's say three levels, one for the three, one over the five, and one of the seven items made. Uh, for the second, we have, okay, this is the independent variable and uh, a comment in the chat say that we have three level, only text, only icon, both. Uh, actually, it may be in why not in the live, but in the life, but here we just have two levels, either text or icon. We don't have, or, or better, we don't have the, the middle case. So here we can have either the text, either text plus icon or text and icon, it depends how you interpret this. But again, it's, it's related always, it's related from your hypothesis. So you derive independent variable levels and dependent variable from your hypothesis, or you build your hypothesis starting from this, but you have to have a strict uh, mapping between dependent variable levels, dependent variable, and what you write in your hypothesis. Because don't forget that for the analysis phase, you are going to prove or disprove the hypothesis. So you should have a strong match, a one-to-one -one match between the hypothesis and uh, the possibility that you are listing. You can skip some detail, but not, not too much. So yes, we have the first uh, independent variable that is the number of an item, three levels as before, and the label types it is two levels, text versus icon as is written in here. And so how many conditions we have in total? Before we had, with just these, we had three condition. Now, how many condition we have? Do you agree with, with six? without looking at the next slide, obviously. Yes, no, let's go with six. Uh, 
And yes, that's six because ob because you have uh, three uh, condition in the first case, two condition in the second case. So you have in total six condition. Um, again, three levels for the first independent variable and second two levels for the second independent variable. And you typically uh, depict this in this way. Uh, also for creating tasks and collecting um, data from participant. So you can you create typically a table uh, in which in the first row, the, say, the first the first split of column is one independent variable and the second is the other independent variable. So you have an hypothetical participant one that is doing a task with the three menu item icon in the textual label setting. Then you have the participant doing the same task with the same three menu item, but with the textual label plus icon. Then you have the same participant doing the same task with five item in the textual label condition. And then with the five item menu in the textual label plus icon condition. And then repeat for the third, the fourth, whatever level you have for the items made. And this table could be also done in the reverse way, in which you have two columns. And it's it's the same in which you have two columns, uh, in which you write here text. And so you, you invert the the, the levels of the, the two independent variables and here icons. And here you write three, five, seven. Three, five, and seven. So you can either write this table in this way or in this way. Um, doesn't change a lot because in the end you have six condition that the participant have to uh, explore. You are just changing uh, which is uh, the thing that uh, maybe we did the order in some case of the of the task. Uh, what the participant is going to say is going to see is going to see in this case it is probably and we will see after in the methodology. That is, this is not necessarily always true. But in this case, if we are following a logical and sequential order, the participant is going to see the three item menus before in this two configuration, and then the five in this two configuration, and then the seven in this, in this two configuration. In this other case, uh, the participant is going to see the three item menu in the textual configuration, then the five items menu in the textual configuration, then the seven in the textual configuration, and then all the three configuration in the icon setting. So in the end, you are collecting the same amount of data, six per, for each participant, but what changes the order and, and how you organize this information. And again, let me say that the order could be dependent also from the methodology you are going to, to use. And we will see this in January, but in a linear way, you see immediately that there is a difference just in this way of proceeding, not in data. And so what you are going to do in, in this case in a control experiment, well, you are going to ask participant number one to perform, uh, to, for instance, select the last item of the menu and participant number one to five seconds in the text level and seven seconds here and 10 seconds here, 12 seconds here, and I don't know, 15 seconds here, and 16 seconds here. And then you may have participant number two, participant number three, etc., up to participant number 12, 20, whatever. And so you're collecting this information and you are you know that all these numbers at a certain point will be analyzed statistically. And you want to know by looking at all these number if your hypothesis here holds or not. So you, you would like to say that the three item menus is better, is faster 
the five uh, item menus, and maybe the, the textual label is faster than in the uh, in the icon version or not. And so, for instance, by looking at this number, it may seem that there is well that the three items menu is with if you only have participant number one, the three items menu is actually faster than the other because we have five and seven, and here are 10 and 12, and here are 15 and 16. Uh, if you have all participants like participant number one, but you don't really cannot see if there is a difference between textile label and textile label plus icon, because yes, there is a difference, but it's quite small. So by the difference, it could be, it may seem that the textile label are have a little bit of advantage with respect to this. But you cannot be sure, let's say, if this is a real effect or not. And it may be dependent from the participant or the task or whatever. And so you need something better, let's say something more specific to analyze these and say, okay, yes, the three item minus is better than the five and the seven for this for what concerns select, selection speed, uh, but you have no difference between using text or icons. Or yes, there is a difference and this is way better to use text or not. Again, by looking at participant number one as this number that just invented here, it seems a slightly better difference, a slightly better for textual level. But maybe then you have participant number two and participant number two is made in this way. And all your assumption decrease, crash at all. Because yes, for participant number one, there is a clear, it seems to be a clear evidence that the three items menu is better and slightly better in the textual label. But then for participant number two, you cannot say, because essentially it, it took the same speed, the same time to do everything, except here in the textual label plus icon for the seven menu item. So here, if we just look at participant number two, we can say that there is a slightly better preference for the seven item menu in this configuration that is totally different from the first one. So we need to get more data and to get a better picture of how this thing work. And this is the goal again of control experiment uh, that is more scientific again and employs statistic to get to understand if there is a difference or not. Maybe there is no difference, it's fine. And we can say that th the, the hypothesis is, is not confirmed and there is no change, no difference for our population, the population that we recruit and our task in performing this, this computation. So I said before that we can have one or more dependent variable. Uh, and actually we have, we could have uh, like in the example, multiple independent variable. And we can ask ourselves if there is a upper limit. Uh, so typically a good experiment design is one that limits the number of independent variable to one or two. Most of the uh, control experiment have one or two independent variable. In some cases, they could have three independent variable, but not uh, more than three. Uh, they, that's a different reason. One is, let's say, on the human side, that is, uh, that you, if you have a lot of condition, a lot of a lot of independent variable, and you have probably a lot of condition because each independent variable as a level and you have something that to measure for, you have an independent variable that you measure for each of them. And then you have to, to sort of recruit a, a proper number of participants and maybe also think, uh, is the participant that is uh, looking at the three item menus uh, becoming faster in the seven item menus because he, he already or she already uh, test the same system for time before arriving here. So it's learning. So in this case of the menu, it's quite 
easy as an example, it's quite stupid as an example, but it's learning the user in using the application faster because you have to do maybe three tasks here, three tasks here, three tasks here, three tasks here. Task task so when it comes here, it, it did quite a lot of tasks and in the same condition, so the text and then the, the icon, then the text again, then the icon. So here, the participant know that he's going to see a text because it happens already two times and that you have to do the same three tasks because you already do the task in all these four times. So there is some learning, there is, uh, and this is just two second, two independent variables. So let's imagine with more dependent variable, each one with their own level. This grows a lot. And then you have also to recruit maybe more people and to consider this. So there is quite a complexity on, on the human side, but there is also complexity, let's say on the statistical side. Because if we look at the facts among variable, we know that an experiment with one independent variable includes a main effect on the dependent variable. That is how the dependent variable affects the results of independent. If we have just one dependent variable, let's imagine with one level for, for now, as an example, we just have a matching number associated to a specific independent variable, it's easy. If we have two independent variables, each of them with one level for simplicity, we have two main effects and one effects of interaction. That is, each each, uh, we have an effect for each independent variable, so each independent variable has some properties that stands independently from the other variable and also an interaction effect. So how one independent variable, the, the, the data, the data, the task that we are going to prove one independent variable impacted the other. And this is called two way because you have just two independent variable interacting from them. That means in the example uh, here, if you discover that the three menu item in the textual label is faster than the seven menu item in the textual plus icon, is this decision? And so you have an effect that is going, that is dependent for the three or the seven eight item, independent from the other. You have an effect that is depending from these specifically or from these. And then you have the interaction between two because the participant is testing the three item menus in the two different configuration, the textual label or not. And here the participant is testing the menu item within a different configuration, the several item in other two configuration. So here it's better, it's faster here. And the merit of this faster is more related to the three items is more related to the textual label. And this is the interaction effects in a way. How these two interact together and which is the contribution of, of, it, of two, the two of them. Uh, if you have a three independence variable with one level each, you have three main effects and four interaction effects. So seven effects in total. That is quite a lot already. And so you have three, two way and a single three way. This is the three way and you have two, four interaction effects between uh, the, the combination of variables. Mm -hmm. So independence variable one with two, independence variable one with three and two with three. And this is, uh, from this point on interaction effects here with three independence variables that are three way in, in this way or higher are difficult to interpret from a statistical point of view, because it, it makes things quite a lot complex to say, okay, which is the, so if you have two, interac two interaction effects, you can more or less say, okay, it's more related to this or more related to the other. If you have three, it, it starts to be complex. If you have four independence variable, you have 14 different effects instead of seven. So you see how faster this grow. And so you come up with too many effects, too many variables, and much more difficulty to interpret the results from a statistical point of view. And also from saying, yes, we are disproving the null hypothesis 
we, we are reaching our goal or we don't know. So if you add too many uh, independent variables, you risk to have uh, some additional undecision. While you, if you keep maybe two experiments which is to set to a smaller set of independent variable, you risk to have stronger and more uh, clear, clearer results than putting all together. So all of this to say a good experiment design is the one that limits the number of independent variable to one or two, maximum three. Because in all of these, you have to consider levels, you have to consider methodological design, you have to consider statistics. So it, it becomes very, very complex, uh, very, very easily and quicker. And this is independent versus dependent variables. We have three other types of variables that are variables that is good to consider or to know about the resistance when you plan. And here we are still in the planning phase of the control experiment, when you plan a control experiment. And these three variables are control, random, and confounding. So the control variable or the control variables are variables that may influence a dependent variable, but they are not under investigation. You don't care. Like in the example before, uh, in the chat before, when you, you said, um, we can have also the selection error. Yes, we can, but we don't care. Uh, or other variables that could be, again, influence, stronger a dependent variable. Again, not under investigation. And we need to control or at least think about them. So for instance, in our case, in selection speed, the mouse cursor speed strongly influence the dependent variable. Because if we keep the mouse, the mouse cursor speed constant between all the participant or the condition, uh, we have a failure evaluation. But if we start to change, or we are doing the evaluation on different computer with unknown mouse cursor speed, we don't know, which is the, we are introducing also this as a factor that impact our measurement of time, potentially. And we are not aware of that. We are not controlling them if you are, if you are changing them and we are not measuring them. And this could be problematic. So in our example, for instance, mouse course of speed could be a control variable, something that we are not interested in, something that we are not measuring, but something that we say, okay, we are going to use this computer to do all the experimental. We, we are going to use this mouse and the mouse course of speed is set as the default value. And for the entire experiment should be set at that value. We don't care about the value. We are not interested in understanding which is the impact of changing value. We want to control that the condition during the experiment doesn't change. The settings during the experiment doesn't change to have a fair experiment. And in other contexts could be also the display size because maybe it may affect the amount of information you see on screen. And so if you have something for which you need to scroll down and you have a smaller screen for some experiment and a bigger screen with other experiment, you are changing the condition of what you are measuring. Uh, the smartphone type, if you are testing a mobile application on Android, on iOS, maybe also the operating system may have an impact how things are depicted, presented, and which function that you have uh, under control you can use or you cannot. So these are control variable. Again, variables that we don't care, we don't want to measure. So they are not under investigation. And we essentially, we don't really care, but they may influence a dependent variable. So we want to at least take a look at them and say, okay, we are measuring speed with mouse and we are not going to move the mouse course of speed for the entire experiment. And we're going to use the same computer. Or if you need to use multiple computer, we are setting the mouse course of speed the same in our computers, because this could affect the, the data that we are collecting. And therefore the results of the, of the, of the experiment and uh, our analysis could, could have some bias due to this. Uh, 
then you can have some random variable. Uh, these are, let's say, the, the face of the same coin. Uh, from one side, you have variable that may influence a different variable that you want to control them. From the uh, other uh, side, you don't want to control everything and you want some variables to vary randomly. And maybe you really want to, to vary uh, randomly. And typically, these random variables pertain to the characteristics of participant, like gender or the height of a person, if it's something that it's related to sit down or using a screen or a camera, or the hand size, if you're measuring something uh, similar. So you, you don't want to have all males during an experiment. You want to control exactly the number of people, but you want to have some random. You may want to have some people in different genders to maybe uh, have a full picture of different ages or different height. So you want a, a bit of ran, random uh, variables or random uh, things in your experiment. And then there are confounding variable that again should not be, should be think about, uh, not always apply, but could be uh, something to keep in mind. And confounding variables are any circumstances or condition that change systematically with, the, with this time and dependent variable. So well controlled variables are well related to dependent variable, confounding variable are dependent with, in the, are related to independent variable. So circumstances or condition that may affect, or better, that surely affect in a systematic way an independent variable of the experiment. And this is obviously problematic because you don't know after the experiment, if the effects observed, if the results that you obtained was due to the independent variable in the first place or to the confounding variable or to both, and which is the relation. So this is problematic for getting, again, for rejecting the null hypothesis or to confirm the, to prove your original question, your original hypothesis, because you don't know. And you are creating an experiment and then if you don't think about possible confounding variable, um, it, it could be problematic to, to come to the end uh, and, and discover that, oh, maybe I have this confounding variable and you have to redo everything from scratch because I didn't consider that and I needed to. Uh, so in some cases uh, you can, let's say control the confounding variable. In other case, you just accept uh, that the confounding variable is there and you are presenting this as a possible limitation. And here, there is, this is an example. And often confounding variable are, sometimes confounding variable are related with hardware uh, device. So here, for instance, if you have two different cameras uh, to track a person eye hmm, in, in different condition. Hmm, so maybe you have a camera here, uh, 15 centimeter from me that is tracking my eyes. And then I would like to say, for instance, it's a, a, task, a given task is faster. Um, or if I looking at a specific point uh, in two different conditions, one is near, one is far. And maybe so you have a camera that is here, 15 centimeter for me that is tracking my eyes. And another that is three, met three meters uh, distant from me. That again is tracking my eyes. So it's absolutely doing the same thing. And we are interested in evaluating something about tracking in two different, uh, tracking the highs in two different conditions. One is near and one is far away from, from me. Uh, and we are collecting data and so on. But obviously the, far, the camera that is close to me has some technical specific characteristics that are way different from the camera that they have far away. Maybe the one that is closer to me, maybe the, the two cameras have the same resolution, for instance. Uh, and this could be problematic because the camera that is close to my eye could have a better track on my eyes because it's closer. And the camera that is far away uh, could have a different precision in tracking my eyes. And so results could not be uh, appropriate, accurate enough. And so also this 
same characteristic in the camera could be problematic for the experiment because change the independent variable. And maybe I should have a camera here that track with a specific precision and a camera far away that tracks with the same precision. So sometimes you can correct confounding variables, maybe again, buying the, the most appropriate camera. In other case, you cannot. Uh, and, and you are as trying to, to put them in the best, let's say, light possible and to consider them at their best. And then in other cases, you just say, okay, this is a limitation. We cannot control these. We, we, can, we don't have a way to, to have the same setting in these two, two conditions. And this could be a confounding variable that may or may not impact significantly the experiment. Again, in most cases, confounding variables are treatable in some way, but it strongly depend from the situation. In other cases, you don't have confounding variables because you, you don't have condition that impact the uh, independent variable. Any question up to this point? Okay, what, what do you think if you have any question? Uh, as I was saying before, uh, today we are just giving an an introduction to this and we are speaking about variables, we will start speaking about hypotheses and experimental methods and counterbalancing and procedure statistics and so on after the Christmas break, uh, so in January. Um, so now what I want to do, no, I don't want to keep annotation, is uh, answering to some of your question that uh, I received. And then this document is linked in the page of the course. Um, and now I'm going to, to answer vocally, let's say, uh, to this, uh, orally to this question, but then I will also type down an answer here. And if you have any other question about the lecture, or about the exam, the course, now it's it's, it's a good moment to to ask them in the chat. So uh, a colleague of yours uh, asked uh, today, for the written exam, watching videos and studying slides are enough to get the maximum score, that is 30, 30 points for the exam. Uh, yes, I would say yes. Uh, watching and understanding videos and slides and all the material that we provided uh, are enough for getting the maximum score. Also, don't forget that we have some sample exam in the website of last year. So you can look at the exercise and uh, have a look uh, how they will, which, which kind of question you may have. And also the last day of the course, we are going to use one hour of the lab, the second slot of the lab for a um, sample uh, exam. So we are going to give you an exam similar to the real exam. You have some time to to try to do the exam and then we will see the, result, the solution together and we discuss the possible solution and we will release also the solution of this sample exam on the website after the, the will be and this will happen the, the last day of uh, of the lab the last day of lecture the last of the course in january uh, We should, should we give the oral exam and project delivery before the written exam, which is the 28th of January? So we didn't decide yet. Uh, for sure, you will have uh, an oral exam and so the oral exam will be in a separate day, a separate day with the written exam. Uh, the project delivery is seven days before the date of the oral exam. So let's imagine that the oral exam is the, I don't know, the, five, the 5th of February. Uh, you have the written exam the 28th. For instance, the oral exam is the 5th of, of February. We didn't decide yet. And the project delivery is seven days before the date of the oral exam. And obviously the oral exam could also happen before the 28th of January because it's a date that we, we decide essentially. Probably for the first session, we 
are not going to do the oral exam before the written exam, but after. Uh, this is a question. This these are the question came from yesterday office hour or around them. So do we need to show? Um, uh, do we need to show the demo in a computer browser and a mobile phone? It's the same. Uh, obviously, if you can show us on a mobile phone, maybe it's it's better, it's nicer. But you can also show them in a, in a browser on a computer with the right, let's say, resolution and size. Uh, how can we test the web app in a mobile browser? Browser, you can either um, pick the IP address of your computer, um, which is obviously not localhost, uh, and open the address on your mobile phone. So if your computer has, uh, has an IP address 192.168.0.3, you just, and the, the browser and the server is publishing uh, its pages on the local network, from the local network, you can, in your browser, open 1998.192.168.0.3 uh, on the port 3000 and see your uh, or whatever port you choose and see your uh, applications let's say ser that is served from your computer to your phone or you can use ngrock so you can install ngrock and create a tunnel between the, your server and your computer and a public address on the internet so that get so that everybody that has some that address while your server is still running can open your website your web application on their smartphone not only you and your local network, but also people uh, that are away from your um, home. Uh, do we need to have the oral exam, the written exam in the same session? No, you can have the written exam, let's say in February and the oral exam in September or vice versa. It's up to you. The only constraint is that both part needs to be done in this academic year. So you have to complete the written exam and your exam before September 2021. Otherwise you lose the part that you have completed and the other part uh, that is not done is not done. You lose the, the, the partial mark and you have to redo uh, the exam and the, or the oral, the written or the oral exam from scratch in the next academic year. Uh, can we refuse the written? This was about the written. Uh, exam grade, yes. Um, you came in the, the next, we, we are going to register your, your score, your final score when we have both part completed and you are telling us, please register. If we have both part completed and you are, aren't saying anything to us, we are not going to register anything and they stay there up to the end of the year or up to your at the academic year up to your um, your statement to register. So if you want to refuse the written exam grade, you just need to, and it's sufficient obviously, otherwise it's automatically re rejected. Uh, you can just came the next session or in any of the, the following session for the written exam, sit down, have a look at the, uh, of the test of the text, and if you want to continue, if you submit the results of your written exam, then we will delete the previous grade and we will maintain the new score, whatever it is. Uh, instead, if you stay there and, and then at a certain point say, okay, no, I'm not interested, it's too difficult, or I don't think to, 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 to get a better grade than the previous session, you just leave and you, have uh, still the, the previous exam grade for again, all the academic year until you either decide to tell us to register or you have a new written exam and a new uh, submitted a new grade. Um, for the, in the chat, let me write this here. I cannot copy and paste, but for the oral exam, is there the possibility of coinciding with other 
exam of other courses. Uh, we try also by speaking with you uh, not to do this. Uh, so if it's a course, it's another written exam that is in the in calendar, uh, we have a look that in that day you don't have as a computer engineer in the computer engineering degree of your year, you don't have other exam. Um, so we try to avoid same day, same hour. Uh, sometimes last year we weren't able to avoid same day, different hour. Uh, because it, it, given it's an oral exam, maybe there is the one group that is giving the oral exam at 10 a.m. in the morning, and some people in that group has a written exam at 4 p.m. that day. So we are, given it's oral, we, we have a little bit of flexibility about hours, starting hours with one group that can be part of some before and after. But yeah, we, we try obviously not to. Uh, of making exam overlapping with other exams. Uh, can we use up-to-dated version of icons in your implemented prototype and change the wireframe, which are the different version of icons, or we have only to implement uh, the graphical elements in the wireframe with the same design? You don't have to change the wireframe. So you have the wireframe that is was done weeks ago. You have the heuristic evaluation on that wireframe. You have the results of the heuristic evaluation to be applied to the interactive prototype. The wireframe is there, is frozen, and you cannot change the wireframe. Uh, if you want to change the icon, because we have an up-to-date version of the icons uh, or different icons, because you decide to have colors in the icons and you, you cannot have colors. Uh, you didn't have colors obviously in the wireframe, you can obviously change the icons and use the icons in the implemented uh, version of the prototype. Don't change the wireframe ever. The wireframe should be the same that you gave for the heuristic evaluation to the evaluators. Uh, two questions, when we will know the dates of the oral exam, when we decide then, and this is, uh, we didn't decide, but we will, <laughs> Uh, decide them um, in January. So uh, I think that after the, and for we, I mean, Professor Korn and, and I. Um, so uh, after the, the holiday, um, after the holidays, we will decide. Uh, so uh, back in January in, in, in Turin, let's say at Poly, we will decide the date of the oral exam and we will ask you if it's a good date and then we will ask the Polytechnico to put um, that date on the Portal della Didattica so that you can enroll to the oral exam. Uh, will we have a lab text to follow for usability testing? Yes, uh, you will have a text lab to follow for the, the first, uh, first lab of the new year and also a template for milestone number four as for any other milestones. So yes, absolutely. Okay, any other question? And then this document is already linked in the, in the web page of the course. So you can always have a look at it and at the answer uh, that I will type after or tomorrow, but essentially I already answered to you, to all this by voice. Well, if you don't have any other question, I will stop the recording, stop the sharing, and I will wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and we will see uh, next year uh, remotely, but we will see next year.